Here are all the gaming announcements from the Dub Dub 20 keynote and the events following last week. I am joined by my colleague and good friend John, who will cover the Mac gaming announcements later on. Say hello, John. Hello. Great to be here. First, here are two upcoming games that were shown at WWDC. Coming to iPad soon is one of the world's best RPGs, Definity Original Sin 2. It has over 100 hours of role-playing and over 1 million words of voiceover. This is a giant leap forward for gaming on modern Apple GPUs and should inspire many more developers to bring more AAA games to iPad in the future. The Coast is a 2D indie game where you have to carefully direct ships from the shore so they don't crash and lose their precious cargo. It is going to be available across all Apple platforms. Keyboard and mouse support is coming for iPadOS games. Thankfully, Apple now allows developers to add official mouse and keyboard support to their games for iPadOS. Fox 2, a sample game, was demoed during a tech session to demonstrate how easy it is for developers to add this technology into their apps. This will be amazing for first-person shooters or MOBAs that require fast movement and precision. Some games just don't translate well for the touchscreen or even a controller, and objectively they just don't stack up to playing with a keyboard and mouse. The developer, Clay Entertainment, have actually informed me that their game Hot Lava will be updated in the future with mouse and keyboard support. There have been major advancements with game controllers. New controller support is here for the Xbox Elite Wireless Controller Series 2 and Xbox Adaptive Controller, which means gaming on Apple devices is more accessible for all. And that's not all. We have very exciting news with the addition of haptics and rumble support this year, which is great to immerse you into games. Motion sensor support is also coming. Players can now use the gyroscope and accelerometer on your controller. You can rotate your controller in 3D space to aim the camera, or even shake the controller to make a game character attack. Apple has expanded light bar support on DualShock 4. It is no longer just orange. Now it can change to different colors depending on what happens in games. We also have unique inputs. This can apply to touchpads and paddles and just different inputs. And if a game supports controllers, developers can add a controller badge to indicate this on the App Store. Game Center has been completely redesigned. Game Center is now implemented in the App Store or directly in games. For example, when in a game, you can access the all new Game Center access point from a dashboard. Now you can see your Game Center profile, achievements, and leaderboards within a Game Center enabled app. Profile shows an in-depth look at your friends, friend suggestions, players you've recently played with, achievements you've unlocked, and all the games you've played. Achievements has been redesigned as a collective card format. Up to 100 achievements can be unlocked for each game. These achievements are grouped by completed and locked, and there will be different types of achievement cards for progression. And then we have leaderboards, which can allow you to see how you rank up with other players in games. You can compare yourself against friends, recent players, or global players. The multiplayer UI has also been redesigned. You can now adjust how many players you want to add, depending on a game's limit. Then you can add a nearby player, friends, recent players, and contacts. An empty slot left blank will automatically be auto-matched. We have new browsing features in Apple Arcade. Players can now discover and play your next game with new browsing features in Apple Arcade. Sort options such as release date, updates, and even controller support. 
Plus, you can see what games are popular with your Game Center friends. TVOS 14 expands multi-user capabilities. Players can soon instantly resume your favorite games exactly where they left off. Through Control Center, players can easily switch between users, their game progress, Game Center achievements, leaderboards, and friends. Here's John to tell you all about the Mac developments. Thanks, Stewie. So I'm here to talk about the Mac transition to Apple Silicon and what it means for Mac gaming. Apple has announced they will be creating their own processors in the form of Apple Silicon. This will provide increased battery life, blazing performance, and better GPUs. Among other benefits, Apple claims this will help developers write more powerful high-end games. Laptops will undoubtedly see a boost in performance and battery life. What remains to be seen is what kind of hardware ends up in Pro Machines and iMacs that could benefit gaming over existing Intel configurations. The new common architecture across all of Apple's platforms could also prove to be an intriguing factor that brings more apps and games to the Mac over time. This is due to the immense popularity of the App Store as one of the largest digital storefronts in the world. While we don't know everything about the impact these changes will have on Mac gaming moving forward, there are both concerns and promising details. Apple expects these changes to take place over the next two years. So what about current Intel-based games and Boot Camp? Current games and apps will be handled by Rosetta 2. Rosetta 2 is an emulation software that will allow any app that isn't updated to still run on the new Apple Silicon Macs. Apple has been down this road before with Rosetta during the switch from PowerPC to Intel, but this version is even better. At WWDC, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, an existing Intel-based Mac App Store game, is used to demonstrate high-end Mac gaming running smoothly under Rosetta 2. As with any emulation layer, you won't get max performance, but it does work, meaning your current library of 64-bit Mac games should be safe to play on the new Macs. So what about Boot Camp? At this time, Boot Camp will no longer be possible with Apple's new chips. Originally, this was made possible by the switch to Intel in the past, so that will no longer be the case. Apple may offer us some alternatives, but that remains to be seen. Improved virtualization through apps such as Parallels may become a viable alternative. New features iPad and iPhone apps on Silicon Macs Developers can now easily port their iOS apps to run natively on Big Sur without any special work. This means you can play many iOS games on these new Silicon Macs when they come out. Compatible apps will also be available on the current Mac App Store. An example of this technology at WWDC was Monument Valley 2 shown running natively on a Mac. Ray Tracing API added to Metal Apple has added ray tracing to the Metal framework on macOS this year. What is ray tracing? This next-gen technology brings realistic lighting, shadows, and effects to games, making them even more immersive and visually impressive. Ray tracing is a big deal in PC gaming, and it's terrific that it's going to be available on Mac games as well. Game Engine Support As you can see in their demo on screen, popular game engines such as Unity have already promised to support Apple's new hardware. The demo shown at a tech session at WWDC demonstrates advanced rendering techniques such as volumetric lighting, ambient occlusion, and real-time reflections, all possible on Apple Silicon. These updates allow Unity-based games to run on current Macs and Apple Silicon. Expect Unreal Engine 5 to also offer similar support when it releases next year. That's all for the updates on Mac gaming. Back to you, Stewie. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's definitely something a little bit different than what we usually do. If you found it useful, definitely leave a like as it greatly supports the channel. And if you're new to the channel, you should subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos about everything Apple gaming related.